Hello everyone, good evening. Um, we're going to be looking into page object model today and also what we call the base page as well. And we would also be looking into page, page factory and moving all our locators that we've inspected and added to our step definitions into our page object files. So without wasting too much of our time, I'm going to share my IntelliJ screen now and just sort of explain a bit before we dive right into what we are going to be looking at today. Right, so um, you can obviously see on the left-hand side where your folders are, we still have the Cucumber Manager and the Page Object Empty, which are the main, I think they are packages, yeah. So the main packages that we need to um, fill up. And the Page Object Model, um, maybe curious as to what Page Object Model is. Page Object Model is also what we call POM. And to simply explain it, it is a design pattern that is popularly used in test automation that creates object repository for all our web UI elements. So object repository in this case would be the locators that we are inspecting and getting from the HTML DOM. And the purpose of having a POM or a page object model is that it helps to reduce code duplication and also improve test maintenance as well. So assuming you have the accept cookie button, assuming the accept cookie button is being used in different places in your test, then um, if you are trying to change the locator that you've gotten for that, you don't have to look for it in like the 10 different places that you specified it. You just need to go and look for it in your page object mode where it's gonna be specified once and obviously change the code from there. And um, there are also some other importance as well that I'm gonna talk about while we move along. And um, under this page object module, um, it's always recommended that um, just as you have different feature files for the different um, web pages that you're testing on your application, you should also have different and corresponding page object file, which we're going to call page classes for the different pages of the web element that you are testing in your application as well. So we've got an inquiry page dot feature and we've got an inquiry step definition file as well. So we're going to have an inquiry page page object and everything in there is going to be related to only the inquiry page alone. So as I mean, you have another one that another feature file that is about login. You would have your login feature underneath the inquiry or before the inquiry, depending on. So it's, it's going to be in chronological order. So it's going to be under the inquiry. Then you have your step definition for your login as well. Then you have your page object for your login. So the same thing also goes for the registration page. If it's a registration page or um, if it's a... Uh, um, Profile page, you would have a feature file for your profile. You would have step definition for your profile. Then you have page object for your profile so that when you want to make element changes to specific um, fields on a specific page, you know what folder or file to go and look for um, what you need to change. So when we're, when we're talking about like profile, um, it could be maybe something like uploading a picture. So when it comes to like uploading a picture, maybe the locator for the upload button has changed. You know that you would find it inside your profile page object. It's not gonna be inside your login because your login page does not contain file upload. So that is just um how your folder structure is meant to be like. And then, um. This page that you're creating or the page object page you're creating would obviously identify web element of that specific. Also contain page methods that will perform operations on those web elements. So operations in this case would be like the dot click, 
the dot, send keys, the dot, get text that we've been using, the dot is displayed. So those are operations that will be performed on your um, elements that you specify there. So we're basically just moving this driver.find element. So this is what I'm talking about. So we're basically moving this driver.find element um, by xpart.getText. We're basically moving them into a page object file so that um, the codes here are going to be a lot more simplified, a lot more neater, and uh, um, basically reduce this confusion as well. So that's just what we're going to be doing today, or that's the importance of page object model. And um, when we are also talking about page object model, you would also um, talk about what we call page factories. We're going to be, I'll show you, or you obviously see it when we're also using page factory as well. So page factory in Selenium is more or less like an inbuilt page object model framework concept for Selenium web driver. And it is used for initialization of page object or to initialize the page object itself. So instead of us using driver or find element, we're going to be using at find by, which is like a simple annotation that we use to find elements. So instead of having driver to find by in our page object, we're going to be using at find by. Um, then we'll also say find by, I find it by X, but I find it by ID. We're still going to be using all of those locator types. So but it's only this driver to find by we're going to be changing using the page object factory. And um, like I said, the at find by would obviously accept um, ID, CSS, selector, class name, expat, name, tag name, partial link text, which are all types of locators. So that is what page object, page factory is about. And in a simple nutshell, or just to summarize what I've talked about so far, page object model in Selenium web driver or in the Selenium framework is an object repository design pattern. That's what you should see page object as. It is an object repository design pattern. And then when we also talk about page factory, it's basically an optimized way to create object repository in page object model framework. So, um, and then like I mentioned, the other importance of page object as well. And the first two that I mentioned are, I mean, it reduces code duplication and also improves test maintenance. I'm not sure if that's for me. Um, so the two um first importance I've mentioned for page object is it reduces um code duplication and also um I think that's what I said it reduces code duplication and improves test maintenance and then a couple of other importance is that um your codes become more optimized because of the reusable page method. We're going to look into that one as well. And then another importance of page object is um, it makes your code or your script readable and reliable as well. So because you can simply identify um, where a specific method is being used or where you want to use a specific method so that you're obviously not duplicating. Everything all just comes down to code duplication and easy maintenance. That's just the main importance of page object model within your project or your framework. So now that I've just given you like a little um, introduction into page object, we're just going to dive right into uh, IntelliJ now. And I will be sending you links on page object. I don't think I added that. Um, in the PDF document. I can't remember adding that there. But I'll send this separately into the group chat before the end of the class tonight. Right. So um, let's dive right into our IntelliJ now. So like I mentioned, there are two main packages here that we need to fill up. The first one is what we call page object. And the second one is what we call Cucumber Manager. And on, we'll start with our page object that will move to Cucumber Manager. Under our page object, I'm going to create a um, page object for the inquiry page. And it's a Java class. And it's simply going to be called 
inquiry page. I'm going to press enter. And you can see it's already created on that the page of the package. And the next thing I'm going to do is to go up to my Cucumber Manager and create a new Java class as well called Base Page. So you can decide not to have the Cucumber Manager package here and just create a base page as a Java class on that Java, or just so that um, everything looks neat in terms of the folder structure. We just have the Cucumber Manager package there. So the base page is going to contain a driver.quit, which is, um, let me go back into my step definition. Our base page is going to contain a driver.quit, which is basically closing our URL or closing our Chrome browser. And it would also contain um, a driver.get URL, driver.get. So basically opening up, um, or basically opening up the URL that we specified within the bracket. And then the base page can also um, contain any implicit or explicit weight that you obviously specified within your code. You can also be there so that um, it just makes your work neater. And um, they're basically also containing like your prerequisites, like your, is it, is it called pre prequel and sequel? So basically the opening statement and the closing statement, more or less like that. So the driver that gets is gonna be considered as the opening statement because it's opening up a specified URL that you specified within the code. And the driver that quit is basically closing the browser and the instances of Chrome driver that is currently open on your system. So obviously the driver that quit is going to be used multiple times within your code. If you are going to be having different feature files, you want to use driver that quit to close every instance of Chrome browser that is opened up every single time the test runs. So you can easily just have that specified in one place and just call that method wherever you want to use it within your code. So I'm going to be looking into methods today, giving methods meaningful names. And we're all going to be doing this inside our page object as well and calling those methods in our step definition files. So now that we've um, created the inquiry page, page object, and the base page, Java class as well, the first thing I'm going to do is to sort of move the driver.get and driver.quit into the base page. And how do I do that? Obviously, we are still going to be using a web driver. So I'm going to, so instead of having public or private, it's going to be protected this time around. I'm going to explain what this protected keyword means, protected web driver. Driver. And then, Right, so I'm going to start with explaining what protected web driver means. So there are different keywords, like I sort of mentioned, there is public, private, and protected. So when we look at the protected web driver, protected is a Java access modifier. And um, it basically helps to determine which class have access to members or which other classes have access to the member of a class. And as usual, the web driver that we have here is an interface in Selenium for automating web browsers, the different types of web browsers that you have. And then the driver here is a variable name. And in this context, it is a commonly used name for the instance of a web driver. And to explain this whole sentence in full, when we see protected web driver driver, um, in the web in a Selenium web driver um, framework, it basically declares a web driver instance named driver that is accessible within the class that it is declared in 
and any other subclass or classes in the same package. So that's basically what this whole sentence means. And then when we also look at this constructor that I've sort of declared here, where we have um, public base page. So this base page is also the same class name that is also here. So you can see the same spelling is the same, which is also the same as the name of the file itself. So this constructor that I currently have here, if I'm to explain that to you in simple terms as well, um, it is basically um, creating or it is basically initializing a base page object. And the base page object in this instance is going to be the web driver, which is going to be opened up every time um, we run our test. And as usual, we know that this public is an access modifier, which means that it can be accessed anywhere within the project because it's public, it is opened up. Everybody can, uh, any of your Java class can access that. And then for the base page and the Java web driver in the bracket, it basically de defines the constructor of the base page class and the name of the constructor, like I said. So this is the constructor name here. It must match the class name that we have here as well, or else it's going to be throwing an error. And this constructor is simply taking a single parameter called web driver. And the driver here is also obviously an instance or a is an instance of this web driver that is being called here. So wherever we need to use the web driver, I'll be calling it as driver instead. Instead of saying web driver dot, we'll just simply say driver dot. So that's just what we are. That's what the first line basically means. And then um, when we look at the next line, which is this dot driver equals driver, this is a keyword that is used here to refer to the current instance of the class. And um, if you don't add this this year, Java wouldn't know um, you are referring to the um, web driver variable, which in this case is called driver. And the left, the driver on this left hand side is the instance variable, which is the one being called up here. And the one on the right hand side is the parameter passed to the constructor. So that's just basically the simple explanation of this constructor block of code. So now that I've obviously defined the constructor up here, the next thing we want to do is to create methods for um, our driver.get and methods for our driver.quit. And when you're creating methods, your method names need to be something meaningful, something um, readable as well. And there's also, a pattern of writing your methods also. So when you're writing methods, the first um, letter in your method is going to be lowercase. And if you are joining two or three words together, the first letter of the first word is going to be in lowercase. And the first letter of every other word after is going to be in uppercase. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So um, the first method we're going to create now will be the one for the driver.get URL. And we're going to start with public void. So void means that this method is not returning any value for us. It's only performing an action. So public void, and I'm going to get, call my method name or specify my method name here. So what I want this method to do is to open up the URL I'm going to specify for it. So in this case, my method name would be something along the line of go to URL or navigate to URL. So I'm going to say navigate to URL. So this is my method name here. And like I said, I have three words that I'm joining together here, navigate to URL. You can see the first letter of the first word is lowercase. The sec first letter of the second word is uppercase. And the first letter of the third word is also uppercase as well. Navigate to URL. And what I'm going to be moving in here 
is going to be my driver.get that I have specified here. So I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to go back into my page of my base page because that's where I am. And I'm going to paste it there. Right. So there's another thing I can do. So I can obviously assign a variable to, I can assign this URL to a variable so that I can use that variable wherever I want to use it within this base page class as well. So I can simply copy the URL from here. And then do a variable assignment. So I'm basically storing this URL inside this variable container called URL. And all I need to do is to simply call this URL variable inside this driver.get method. So I'll just say driver.get. So instead of having driver.get https slash slash um, bluesky.com slash automation slash form, I can just simply say driver.get URL. And there we have it. So we have um simply moved our driver.get with the URL specified from our step definition into our base page. And created a method for that one and obviously passed in the driver.get information in there. So that is that one done for the driver.get part. But obviously we're not using it yet in our step definition just yet, but we're just sort of declaring the methods and everything in our base page for now. And the other method I said I will be moving here is the driver.quit. And that is the one that we currently have. Yeah. So in my base page, what I'm going to have is just like I've done for the driver.get, I need to create a new method for the driver.quit. So that's going to be public void. The driver of quit is simply closing the browsers for me. So I'm going to say close browser. And I'm going to have driver of quit in there. Or I can simply just copy what I have here and go back to my base page and paste it there. So I have my driver of quit. And what I'm then going to do is to call the driver dot the close browser method wherever I'm using driver.quit in my step definition. So before we do that, we are going to be um, starting up our page object model. And in this case, we already have that created here. We've called the inquiry page. So we're gonna go into that inquiry page, page object file. And the first thing we're gonna do is, in order to be able to have access to the two methods that we have here, we are going to need to extend the class here. We're going to extend the class here to the base page. So what do we mean by extending a class to another class? So let me first show you how we do the extension. So we, have, we already have a class here called inquiry page. And we're simply going to use a keyword called extends. So you can already see it coming up here as well, extends. So I need to specify the second class I want to extend to, or I want to sort of have access to. So I want to extend this base page. So I need to type it exactly the way it is there because if you are using a capital B and your file name is a small b, it's not going to find it because it doesn't exist. That's what it means. So I'm going to type it exactly as I have it here. So extends base page. And this should actually import directly here. So I'm going to say import class. And that's already been imported here. Right. So let me now explain what I mean by public class inquiry page extends base page. So this is simply an example of class inheritance in Java. And then it basically, um, So this is simply like a class inheritance in Java and um, 
in this structure, the inquiry page can use the WebDriver instances that is already been declared in our base page. So the WebDriver instances that have been declared are the ones that we currently have here. And the way we actually use the WebDriver instances here is to then um, use the super keyword. So there are a lot of keywords that we are obviously using in today's class. And um, they're, they're just basically keywords in Java that I just sort of need to know if you're going to be using some specific um, Java packages or Java files. So when we talk about extensions or we talk about inheritances, if you're using inheritance, then you know that you're going to be using the super keyword to be able to access your web driver in another file. So if you go back into inquiry page, you can see that it's sort of showing in red. That's because something is obviously missing and we need to specify um, the missing keyword, which is super in this case, within our constructor. So how do we do that? Um, we obviously start with So we're going to start with creating a constructor for this particular page object class. So that's going to be public inquiry page because the name needs to be the same. The name of your constructor and the name of the class need to be the same. So I can simply just copy the one here and then paste it here just to avoid typographical error. So this super keyword that is calling the driver here, the driver here is being called from the base page. And the reason why we are calling the driver here from the base page is we are gonna be um, calling the two methods that we already have in our base page, which is um, navigate to URL and close web browser. I'm going to be calling those methods in our step in our page object before we call them in our step definition. And in order to be able to, in order for them to be able to work, we need to specify this um, super driver and also this driver here as well. But if since we're still going to be using the web driver in our page objects, we need to call that one separately because if you're going to be using the driver here to um find your elements and everything like that is not going to work because they are, they've already been sort of connected to the base page, which you are sort of extending into your page object files. So we still need to declare our public web driver here, public web driver driver. And in this same constructor, we are going to continue with the this the driver, and this driver in this case is calling the one that we've just declared on line eight, not the one on line 10. And this is where page factory then comes in. So we don't want to be using driver.findElement in our page object. We want to be using at find by annotation. So in order to use the at find by annotation, we need to implement page object factory inside our page object files. So it's going to be page object dot in its elements driver this. That's not going to be like that. Yeah. Driver comma this. So this is the syntax page factory. I don't know why I keep mixing that up. So this is the syntax for specifying page factory inside your page object. And you can see that the page factory, the package has obviously been 
up here as well on line five. And once you've done all of this, then you're obviously good to go to start moving your um, locators for your first name, your last name into your page object now. But before we do that, like I said, we already have two methods in here, navigate to URL and close browser that we are gonna be calling first of all into our page object files. And how do we do that? Public void open URL. And I'm gonna call this method which says navigate to URL inside this method I've created here. So if I type navigate to URL, it's gonna come up instantly. And the reason why it's coming up is because we have extended that specific class. That is why we are able to access those two methods in there. So the next thing I'm also going to do is to do the same thing for the close browser method in the other base page class. Public void. I'm going to call you a different method name, close URL. We have open URL, close URL. And the method was called close browser. You can see it already on the list here. Close browser. Sweet. So now I have open URL, I have close URL. Continue. Let us call this methods in our... Um, Hmm, should I call this method now? Okay, we're not going to call them just now. We're going to move definition into our, into our page object. We'll then call all of the methods at the same time so I don't get everybody confused. So, um, right, so we have two methods in here. So the next thing we're going to do is to start moving our locators from our step definition into our page object. So if we go back into our inquiry page, inquiry step def, the very first locator that we have here is the accept cookie locator that we are finding by ID. So I'm gonna copy that accept cookie locator without the semicolon, it's the double quote. I'm gonna copy that, go into my page object, So I'm going to come back into my page object. And like I mentioned, we're not going to be doing driver.find anymore. Since we have page factory, we're going to be using the annotation called at find by, you can see it's already coming up. And they are just like there is driver.find elements and driver.find elements. This annotation also has find by and find bys. We're going to be using the singular one, which is at find by. So at find by, and to be sure, the locator I have here is dot ID. So that's what I'm going to use in my page object as well. At find by ID equals paste my um, locator that I've copied. Now the next thing I need public or private web elements, then giving it a meaningful name. I'm going to say private in this case. So private in this case means that this locator will only be accessible within this inquiry page file alone. If I want it to be accessible, so it just depends on, um, where the file is going to be used. If it's only going to be used within your page object file, you can just call it private. If it's going to be used outside, if you think it's going to be used outside, you can then say, call it public. But I'm going to call it private because I know it's only going to be called or accessible within this file. Private web elements. That's it, copy to W, copy to E. Private web element, and I need to give this locator that I currently have here, I need to give it a meaningful name. So I'm going to say, obviously, it's a button. So I'm going to say, accept cookie button. 
And I'm going to close the block of code as well with a semicolon. Nice. So I have moved my accept cookie button here. I've assigned it to the correct locator, which is ID. And I've also given the locator, which is everything you have given it a name called accept cookie button. Now I need to then create a method that would obviously specify the operation that I want Chrome driver to perform. So the simple thing that we are doing here is we are simply moving everything here into our page object. So I'm going to explain again. Right now, we've done the first part, which is driving the find element by ID, the space ID locator. That's simply what we've done up here. Here is the same thing as everything that I've highlighted here. So in order for us to do this dot click, we need to create a method for that. So we do that by saying public void. And the way I always encourage people to name their methods is to sort of align it to what operation is going to be performed within that method. In this case, we're trying to click the cookie button. So what I'm going to call my method is simply going to be click cookie button. And you can obviously see that my method name is the first letter of the first word is lowercase. The first letter of the second word is capital. And the first letter of the third word is capital as well. Click cookie button. It just makes your code look nice. It makes you know, it makes people know that you know what you're doing. And um, it just makes everything look nice and pretty, to be honest. So your method names need to be concurrent in this sort of format. So we have click cookie button method. So what action do I want to perform in here? And it's just as simple as telling web driver to click the cookie button, which is this dot click. Oh, sorry. So which is this dot click? So this dot click part is what we are doing right now. So instead of saying driver to find element, blah, 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 dot click, I'm just simply going to call this locator name that I have here, because I've obviously given this locator, I've given it a name called accept cookie button. So I'm just going to come back into my method and say accept cookie button dot click, because that's the action I want Chrome driver to perform for the cookie button, for the accept cookie button for me. So click on it. So everything that we've done here so far is the equivalent of everything here. Now, I think we can then start calling, let's call the first three methods inside our step definition now. So the first method that we're gonna be calling is the, Navigate to URL. Then we are going to call the close browser, which is at the, the very last step. And then the next one we're going to call is going to be um, the accept cookie button. So I want us to first do those three. Then we then start moving our locators into our page object, then calling the methods in our step definition back. So if we go back into our page object, there are a couple of things we would need to um, delete now. And the very first all sort of comment out, I'm not gonna delete them, I'm gonna comment them out. So the very first thing we're gonna comment out here would be, um, the very first thing we're gonna be commenting out would be uh, driver.get because driver.get is now gonna be replaced with open URL. So how do we do that? We are still gonna to have to call or create a constructor, which is gonna be the same as the class name that we have here. And the constructor is going to be including the inquiry page, 
um, instances as well. So we're going to be creating new instances of the inquiry page inside our step definition. So that's just how the methods that we have in our inquiry page will be called into our step, def step definition or how we'll be able to access them from our step definition. So the first thing we need to do is to declare the inquiry page that we currently have here, public inquiry page. Hiring page. And I'm going to give it call. Okay, I think it's coming up now. Yeah. Let me press option enter. So you can see it's already been imported here. Import page object dot inquiry page is just this one right here. So in a step definition, I need to create an instance of that inquiry page as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to also call it inquiry page. Now we need to create a constructor for our inquiry step definition. So that's going to be public. I'm going to copy this exact same name that I have here so I don't make any mistake. It's not taking in any parameter. And the things I'm going to move here are Our web driver, the Chrome driver. I'm going to copy that and move it in here. And like I mentioned, we need to create new instances for our inquiry page as well. So that's going to be inquiry, which is this one here. Or I can simply just copy it. Inquiry equals new inquiry. And our inquiry page. is accepting a parameter called driver. So this is going to be driver in here. And it's also the same driver that I've already declared up here as well. So that's the same one we are also picking up in here. And now that I've moved line 22 and 23, that means I obviously don't need them in my given step anymore because they are now being moved into my constructor at the very top of my code. So let's not forget that we, we've commented our driver.get. So in order to replace that driver.get with open URL that we have in here, because this open URL is obviously going to go in here to get the URL for us and then do the action or perform the action with the driver.get URL. So driver.navigate to this URL for me. So how do we do that? How do we call the method that says open URL in here. So all you need to do in your step definition is to call the inquiry page, page object inquiry, not this one. I'll just simply type in inquiry. This is the second one, inquiry page object dot then you'll be able to see the three methods that we currently have there. The methods we have in inquiry page are open URL, close URL, and obviously click cookie button. And the one we want to use to get the URL is the one that says open URL. So that's what we're going to pick on the list here. So inquiry page dot open URL. So this is a year. And then I'm going to do the same thing for driver.quit, which is on my then step that says then the form is submitted. So I have, this is my cursor, come on. So I have driver.quit here. So instead of having driver.quit, I'm going to comment that out. And instead of having driver.quit, I'm going to have inquiry page dot close URL which is this method in here. So there's one thing you should notice, this methods are meant to change to purple, or I think they're probably just taking their time. They're meant to be changing to purple. So they'll definitely change to purple. They should change to purple, or they should change to either white. I think it's either white or purple, one of the two. That's what they are meant to change to. Either white, purple, or this color here, orange. Should I call it yellow? So that's one of the colors you're meant to change. So they shouldn't be in gray anymore. 
So um, I think it's just going to take a while for that to like take effect or maybe not a while, but we'll just see. But obviously we can obviously see that they are being used where they are meant to be used. So inquiry page, the close URL, we obviously perform the action of driver dot quit. But this is us calling the method that we've created for the driver dot quit in this instance. Right, so there's one more method we need to call, right? We have the click cookie button. So now we need to go and look for where that is being used and that's definitely in our given step. So I'm gonna comment that driver.find element by ID. Then we paste the locator there, then we say dot close, dot, dot click, sorry. So instead of having that, what I'm going to have in this case is gonna be inquiry page dot click cookie button, just as simple as that. So I don't have this long line of code anymore. I only have this simplified line of code. And that is what we're gonna do for the rest of the driver.find element within our um, step definition. And then thereafter, once you are obviously satisfied, you can then delete all of the commented lines because um, having them now just makes your code look a bit like messy. And you can just simply delete them afterwards and they, your code looks a bit like um, neater, formatted and nice as well. I'm gonna put those ones back that I've deleted. Um, but I'm going to comment them out for now and then replace them with the methods that we've created for them in our page object. So the next two we're going to do now is going to be for the first name and the last name field. So I'm going to pick up the locator for the first name. Let me copy that correctly. So this is the locator for the first name. And like I mentioned, all I need to do is at find by, and then I need to figure out what locator is being used, XPath suite, find by bracket XPath, semicolon as usual, paste the locator in there, then give this locator a name, private web element, and the name I'm going to give it is going to be first name field. You'd also notice that my um, locator name that I'm given is just following the same format as the method name as well, where we have the first letter of the first word is lowercase, first letter of the second word is uppercase, and first letter of the third word is also uppercase as well. So, um, I've given my first name locator a name called first name field. So what do I need to do next? I need to create a method for that one to um, specify the operation I want Chrome driver to perform. So that's gonna be public void. And in this case, I'm gonna say enter first name. Right, to bring it to your attention now, you can see is the methods are no longer grayed out. They are now yellow. So I said, is it that yellow, white, or purple? But it's meant to be yellow. So this is the correct um, color that your method should now be showing up as yellow. So if you're showing up in gray, that means they're not being used anywhere. If they're showing up in yellow, that means they're being used somewhere within your project. And then you can also see the locator names as well are obviously in purple. So um, if something is incorrect, IntelliJ is going to let you know it's going to be showing like red underlines or something like that. So that's when you then need to be worried. So moving on back to our enter first name, I've created a method called enter first name. Now I need to specify the operation that I want Chrome driver to perform. So I'm going to call this locator name here that I've given it. I'm going to say so instead of saying driver.find element by expert, placing my expert there, all I'm simply doing is to call the locator name here that I've given it, which is first name field. And this is even showing up as a web element because that's that's what it is meant to show up as because I've declared it up here. So first name field dot, what do I want to do in the first name field? I'm sending keys. And that's simply what I've also done in my step definition as I'm saying dot send keys. And I'm going to pick up this same value that I have here. 
dot send keys dot send keys only. So that's the first name field done. So I'm going to do the same thing I've done for the first name field for the last name field as well. And I need to just simply get the locator for the last name field. And I'm finding that by name. So go back into my page objects and I'll do at find by name. Name. Private. And I need to give this locator um assignment that I'm doing a name, private web element. I'm going to call it last name field. Close that block of code. So I've done the driver of find element by name, and I've specified the locator as well for that last name field. Now I need to create a method that's going to specify what action I want to perform. So this is going to be public void enter last name. And then I'm simply going to call the locator name just like I have up here. Last name field dot send keys. And what's the value that I currently have here for my last name? I have O. So I'm going to use O here as well. Right. So we have two methods that have not been declared anywhere within our code. So now let's go and declare enter first name and enter last name where they are meant to be declared in our step definition file. And where they are meant to be declared is simply here. So I'm going to comment out the first name and the last name because they're going to be replaced by what we have currently in our page objects. And how do I call those methods? The new methods I've created. As usual, inquiry page dots, you should see it on the list now. You would see enter first name, enter last name. And then the very first field that pops up on the page is enter first name. And after I enter my first name, then I need to enter my last name as well. So that's going to be inquiry page dot enter last name. I need to call the enter last name method. Amazing. So now I've done that one. Now the next one I'm going to do is going to be for my email address. So I'm also doing a dot send keys. So I have um, finding this element by name. So let me copy this one and then go back into my inquiry page. And I'm going to come down here after my last name at find by, I find it by name. Private web element. I'm going to give this a name. I would say, so this is for what field is this for? This is for email address. I would say, Email address field. And then I need to create a method for that one. That's going to be public void enter email address. And as usual, all I need to do is to call the locator name I've specified here, which is email address field dot send keys. Now, what keys am I sending? I just need to copy the value that I currently have here. Copy. And I'm going to paste it here. Sweet. So now I'm going to call this enter email address method in my step definition where it needs to be used. And that is obviously in the step definition that says, and I enter the email address. That's where I obviously need it. And that's where I'm going to paste it. And how do I call that method? Inquiry page dot, you see it on the list. Enter email address. So I can just type it there. Then it's going to pop up. Enter email address. I'm going to press enter. 
and that is going to be declared here. And if we go back into our page object, you would see the other methods already showing in yellow or orange now. I've already done what that color is, but yeah, it's basically showing in orange now. So this one should also change because it's now being used somewhere within our project. So the other locator that I'm going to look at are the other unique ones that we have. So we have the one that says select. So the height one is going to be the same as the first name, last name, and the email address. I'm going to leave that for everybody to do. The one that says new select. So this is for the select. I'm going to do the select as well. And once I do that select, I'm going to expect everyone to do the next select by themselves. So I'm not going to do... I'm not going to move all of the code into step into the page object on the call. So I'm going to move the common ones, then the ones that are similar to those common ones, I would expect everybody to move them by themselves. So I'm going to do the, this one that says the new select for the drop down, And then I'm also going to do one for the assertion as well. And let me see. So I think there are two assertions here. <laughs> So there is this one that is the get text. And we're also doing an asset equals. So I want to do this one. And then there is also this one that is um dot is displayed. So I'm going to leave this one for everybody to do by themselves. The one that says dot is displayed. But I'm going to do the one. That is not get text and assert equals on the call. So now, right, let me do, so I was going to do the one that says new select. Yeah, this one. So the one that says, and I select the right vegan option. Right, right vegan option. So, as usual, I need to copy the locator for the vegan option, and I'm getting it by XPath. Um, what's the definition here? So I'm gonna copy this locator for the vegan option drop down, and we're getting it by X path. So what I'm gonna do now is to go back into my page object, and I'm gonna do just like I've done previously at find by capital F, find by X path. Give the X path the name private where element and I'm gonna call it is it drop down vegan option drop down and then I'm now gonna declare a method that contains the action that needs to be performed so that's public void Select begin option. And like I've declared in our step definition, we are using new select, new select uh, um, locator dot select by visible text. No, that's what we have for the right begin option, yeah. So we are selecting my visible text and the visible text is no. So what I'm gonna do is just like I've also done in my step definition, I go back into my page object and it's going to still be new, select, and I need to import the package for this one. Then you see up here now, the select one here. 
So we have new select. What am I selecting in this case? New select the locator, which is going to be vegan option drop down because I've obviously given it a name already. So that's going to be vegan option drop down. Dot. We said we are selecting by visible text. Select by visible text, and the visible text is no, just like we declared in our step definition here. And if you want to use the other like block of code that we commented out, you want to say select by index, then in our page object you need to say dot select by index. Then your index will now be taking the value of one, which is obviously what you specified in your step definition. So now that we've obviously created a method for the vegan dropdown, let us now call the method in our step definition. And as usual, it's just going to be as simple as commenting out the old line of code you're not using anymore. Then just simply say inquiry page dot. What's the method name that I've called here? Select vegan option. So inquiry page dot select begin option that's what's shown on the list and it's just as simple as that and then i can simply delete this one and delete this one as well and i'm going to simply so let me just quickly do that and i'll redo it again so if i simply do that one then i simply have just this simple block of code here for me let me just put those two deleted lines back so this is just as simple as that for the vegan option now, for the complicated, not sort of complicated, but for this other warning message here, I'm going to move the locator for this warning message for the expected path. I would move it into my page object. So this is going to be a bit different because um, we are getting a text value back. And instead of saying public void, we're going to be using public string. And I'm going to give you an int for this one because the saying is getting, this is also expecting a value back, which is true or false because we're using dot is displayed. You're asking Chrome driver to check whether this um, container for the Confirmation that you get when you click on submit is displayed on the page. So if it's displayed return, yes. If it's not displayed return, if it's displayed return, true. If it's not displayed return, false. That's what we're asking from Java to do in this case. And since we're expecting a value back, the method is going to be public boolean. It's not going to be public void in this case. So I want you to take note of that when you're working on this one. Public boolean, then your method name is what you're going to do in your page object. It's not going to be public void. It's going to be public boolean. And the boolean is spelled B double O L E N. You see it come up on the list as well. So it's going to be public boolean, your method name, then you do all the other declarations you need to do in the method as well. And obviously you need to use a keyword called return. So I'm going to use that return keyword in the assertion that we are going to be moving now so you know what you're meant to do. But I just wanted you to take note or to know that when you're doing the assertion or moving the assertion for that, um, for this specific one that says then the form is submitted for the positive scenario, it's going to be public boolean, not public void. And um, yeah. I just wanted to note that for you guys. So now if we go back into the one we want to move, we want to move this particular line, the expected warning message. And we are going to be moving this whole line into a um, page object. So first off, as usual, we get the locator and we declare it in our page object, give me a name. So let's start with that one. So we have at find by was that an x path let me double check at find by x path okay x path private web element 
and I'm going to call it warning message. Private web element, so I've given the locator year, I've given it a name called warning message. I'm going to be calling warning message inside my method. So now I need to create the method and that would obviously contain the action I want Chrome Driver to perform for me. So in this case, like I said, we are telling it to get text, so get the value for what is contained in that specific locator. So if we go back into our inquiry page, so instead of saying public void in this case, we're expecting a value, so it's gonna be public string because of the string value we're expecting. And the reason we know that is because we've obviously done the manual verification and we've obviously um, declared it as a string here as well in our step definition. So we are simply expecting a string as well in our page object. So in our page object, it's gonna be public string, public string. Then we give you a method name, expected warning message. And then we are simply going to do the same thing that we've done here is what we're also going to do on the first line of code in our method as well. So we have string. And since we are telling Chrome driver to look for that locator for us and get the string values that will be contained in that locator. When you get the string value, I want it to store it in a container for me, like a variable container. And the variable container, we're gonna be calling it short form of expected, expected warning message, because I don't want to have expected warning message with the same words twice, because then it causes conflict. So this is still expected warning message, but with a different spelling. So expected warning message, then we add warning message dot get text. So this line here is the same as this line here. I hope we can agree to that. String expected warning message equals driver dot find element by xpath. This is our xpath dot get text is the same as string warning message equals find element by xpath. Then we've used the name instead, dot get text. So that's just the simplification of what we've done. And our step definition is what we currently have here. And you can obviously see that it's showing um, a red line. And as it's always going to tell you, it's missing a return statement because the method is expecting a value back. We've used, vo if you're using public void, it's not expecting any value back. If I'm using public string, public boolean, public integer, which is int, int, then you need to add a return statement. So we need to return. In this case, we want you to return the container value of the expected warning message that we have here. Return expected warning message. I just copied and pasted it. And I closed that block of code with a semicolon. And you can see the expected warning message is no longer showing in gray. It's now showing in a white color with a yellowish background. So this is how your block of code is also going to look like. So now that we've obviously moved everything relating to the expected warning bit in that assertion, how do we then call, how do we then call this method in our step definition? And then the way we simply do that is to go back into our step definition. And since this line of code on 149 is being used on 152 for the assertion, and since we've moved this one into our step definition, so that technically means that in, into our page object. So we've moved all of this one into our page object and it is being used here as well. So that simply means that this line of code is no longer needed. And what we simply need to do is to replace this one 
with the method that we've created in our page object at, at the moment. And the method is called expected warning message just yet. So if you go back into our step definition, how do you call the expected warning message? You start again by calling your inquiry page instance. So inquiry page dot expected warning message. You can see um, the method is being called up here as well on the list. Expected warning message. So if you go back into your page object, that should change the color of that method should change shortly, but it's definitely being used somewhere within our code. And then I'm going to ask someone a question now. So I want to replace driver.quit with a method that I currently have in my inquiry page. How would I do that? What method am I going to use, number one? And then how would I call that in my step definition? So I want you to tell me the answer to those two questions. I'm going to repeat it again. I want to replace this driver.quit with a method that I've declared in my page object. Question one, tell me what the method is going to be. Question two, how do I call that method in my page object, in my step definition? What's the method going to be? And how do I call that method in my step definition? Yeah, Bimbala, you've got your hand up. The method will be um, close URL and you'll call it by um, inquiry page or close URL. Thank you. So I'm going to replace this one now. And that's going to be inquiry page dot close URL. Sweet. So now that we've obviously made all of those changes, I'm going to run the two um i'm going to run them one by one actually so the two scenarios in my future files that are going to be affected by these new changes so the first one is giving a navigate to the url and i fill out the first name and last name field when i fill out the first name and last name field that one is affected by the vegan option email address first name and last name and also navigating to the URL as well. So um, I'm going to just run the positive scenario for that one because that's going to touch some of the places that I've moved some of the locators into my page object. And it should obviously run just as it was running previously. There shouldn't be any excuses. I believe I've built the project. Let me rebuild it again just to be sure. And then I'm only going to run that specific scenario. Sweet, as expected, that passed. And the other one where we change the um, assertion is one that has to do with warning message on the email field. Yeah, so this is for the negative. And I think previously, it's meant to run three times and one out of three passed. That's because the um, warning message is different for the other two. So I'm going to run this one. As the first one. Second one should still run. It's just the validation on the assertion that should fail because the warning message on that email is 
different, I believe. Yeah, so the, um, what do you call it? So the warning message on those other two examples that we have, they've got two different warning message types. So if they're use if they're omitting the email field, the warning message that is going to be shown is this field is required. If they're using invalid um, email field, the warning message that is showing is please enter a valid email address. And there's a way that we can obviously um, tell Chrome Driver to pick the right warning message to use when it is running the test. But we're not going to look into that one today. We'll look into that probably next week or tomorrow. We could actually look at that tomorrow if we have the time. Or if not, we'll look at that next week. So um, this is just the end of the class. Can we start recording? Ma? Ma? I say, can we stop recording, please?